Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us uh, at the Half History Podcast. Uh, thank you for watching on YouTube and listening wherever you get your podcasts. Please show your support by liking and subscribing. Follow us on social media and look out uh, for us uh, every Friday with the Half History Podcast. You can email us at halfhistorypod at gmail.com. And you can help us grow by becoming a patron at our patreon.com slash halfhistorypodcast. Uh, sorry, that's just patreon.com slash halfhistory. Uh, with all that out of the way, today I'm going to be talking about um, Thomas Edison. Um, yeah. When I got into this, I was looking, originally kind of looking into a uh, subject to uh, kind of study about this week, and it's kind of trying to settle on one, and I ended up going with the light bulb. So when I was looking into the light bulb... You had a light bulb moment. Oh, exactly. A <laughs> life moment. Um, but I was looking into it and it was pretty pretty interesting. It um, is an invention that kind of changed history in a way. Um, it's something that, you know, we're using here to light our, our little uh, set. So um, pretty important. Quite and a few lights. I just actually looked directly at them. <laughs> I probably should stop doing that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're they're weird. Yeah, we're figuring out a, a uh, ideal setup here um, for our production, but it hurts my eyes. Yeah, without lights, <laughs> uh, we wouldn't be able to be doing this. We wouldn't be able to go to work um, before lights were around. People do you, were doing things by candlelight. I know. Honestly, I kind of wish we would still do that. It would really suck, but it's also really cool to just kind of like light a fire. Imagine like. A candlelit restaurant. Ooh. Yeah, that's fancy. nice. Fancy. I know. Yeah. But um, also, it's a fire hazard. If there was a candle. Definitely. In the room. But at the if same there's time. there's curtains around. Exactly. People pay extra for candlelit anything. Do they? You know. I, I wouldn't. Well, <laughs> unless we've already done on dates. No, no, I'm, I'm, no kidding. I'm kidding. I, I would, but you actually pay less because you're not paying for electricity. Well, then. Even better, I guess. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And it, and it smells good. Right. No, if you get scented ones. Of course. Unless you get the the, the candles that smell like butt. Don't they have those candles? Um, Ethan Klein made a candle that smells like my butthole. Um, I kind of wanted to buy it, but I actually heard it smelled really bad. Yeah, well, they only made a limited amount. Right. They were and weren't they like 100 bucks each? 75. 75 i think that was what the original um vagina candles uh, cost as well there was also a vagina candle if you guys didn't know right mm. it smelled like flowers or something though wow you that's know. kind of bullshit um but imagine you have the whole ensemble the vagina candle and then the butthole candle complete set <laughs> <laughs> for burning at once that's pretty great right on um <laughs> It'd probably be pricey. Right. But, It'll uh, balance out. One smells like butthole. The other one smells like flower. $75 candle. That's, that's um, too much for me, even mm. for like a, for a gag. Um, L- literally. Uh. A gag. <laughs> right. Uh, but anyway, before candles, people were basically doing things by... Or before light bulbs, people were doing things by candlelight. Um, Sick. It yeah. was the Industrial Revolution. Things... Um, were being powered by steam and and gas um, and people were still going to sleep when the sun went down Mm. so the good old days when people got hopefully good night's rest right um so the invention of artificial light kind of changed uh the game made it so we don't have to sleep at night so could stay up all night yeah so that's pretty cool it actually came around, um, we'll talk about it in a little bit later, but when I when I was studying the, the, the subject, I was watching a video, shout out to Hank Green, if you want to know more about electricity's history, you can um, watch his video, uh, I think it's Hank, one of the Green brothers, they do the, uh, the, the history mini videos, which are kind of cool, I watch those for inspiration, for kind of topic for the show. Um, also shout out to Georg Ohm, Andre Marie Ampere, 
Alessandro Volta and Michael Faraday. Those are the real homies who kind of put in the groundwork for studying uh, electricity. Uh, also, shout out to Nikola Tesla, but that's going to be for a different episode. Um, you heard of uh, John Travolta, but have you heard of Alessandro Volta? Alessandro Volta. Hmm, fancy. So, um, Where's he from? I think Italy. Alessandro. But Fresh Volt, pasta, yo. Volta uh, um, became volts. Ampere <laughs> became amps. And ohm is um, another measurement of um, energy. Ohm. So they studied electricity so cool. and kind of, yeah. Um, Imagine getting named after all of it. The in in the video he says one of the the best, one of the highest honors in science is for your, for people to start spelling your last name with a lowercase letter, because it becomes a a measurement. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. So, yeah, th- those guys actually put in the groundwork for the understanding of electricity and for it to be accessible or like kind of understood in a way for people to study um but it's still hard in my books right for me to study <laughs> so in i also am not a good student it's yeah this 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 show's given me a reason to um crack open the books again crack open some books do some studying learn about um a little bit of production skills so it's been kind of invigorating for me in that sense but Mm -hmm. i'm definitely not the best student when it comes to um actually um being accountable to uh an institution you know school uh we're trying though right but we're definitely trying here uh today at the half history podcast trying to uh pique other people's curiosity as well hopefully get the ball rolling if you guys are interested or if <clears throat> if you weren't previously to hopefully get a little bit more interested heck yeah because some of this stuff is really cool for sure hit us up we'll do your um your history report mm-hmm. just um you know let us know we'll do all the studying for you and put it together um no we're just kidding but we'll, we <laughs> i was gonna say wow that's, <laughs> that's a lot of work no we do we do i do want to have more topics to study and i like um studying about this particular topic i was looking into light bulbs and uh or well electricity in general Mm -hmm. and uh got really interested in thomas edison so i kind of like those topics that are just one person uh or one kind of event so i'm going into this guy thomas Mm -hmm. um a little bit more into his backstory and how influential he was in when it comes to inventiveness and the development of technology really in in modern times so go a little bit back into in today's history so the first question for today we're going to be uh i'm going to ask you a question okay what made edison famous we have a couple options here okay he became famous um you know at a certain point in his life he was uh kind of a rich and famous guy right he uh so of the things he did he invented electricity created uh, a form of sound recording or or he was the guy who started uh, the rumor of santa claus i'm gonna go with the guy that started the rumor for santa claus uh no <laughs> uh, you're saying that he didn't start the santa claus rumor i wish oh. um My no actually I, I put that in there just could be funny but Hopefully, in the coming days, well, it's December right now when this is going to come out, and I'm going to maybe do a little studying on the origins of Christmas. Ooh. So that's going to be fun. I kind of want to do one on Krampus. Krampus. Mm-hmm. Ooh. So yeah, I, I originally wanted to do one on Thanksgiving, didn't really get uh, around to it when it came to the uh, time. Uh, but it would be cool to do one on Christmas. Mm-hmm. So look out for that. We should get um, Christmas hats, Santa hats. Oh, heck yeah, dude. Oh, yeah, really cool. We could dress the girls up as elves. We hella will. I'm definitely <laughs> going to get uh, some of that. Mm-hmm. Um, but so, yeah. So what actually made Edison famous is he that he invented 
um, he created a form of sound recording. Hmm. Wow. The um, the microphone mm -hmm. kind of existed at the time. The telephone was created in, I believe, 1876. And you could transmit. I don't even really know how the telephone worked. Maybe I'll look into that. Shout out to Alexander Graham Bell. I know he played a big part in that, but. Isn't it a sound waves? Well, actually, before, wasn't it that they had to have, like, telephone operators where they would connect them? Yeah, I, but I don't, I don't even, I don't know where, because they must have used, um, they must have used. Like radio waves. Radio waves. I don't think radio waves existed at the time. I think it was still, like, the telegraph lines. Right. But I don't know how that, because radio, I think, came around in after like 1900 we're talking about 18 1876 oh. oh okay getting ahead of myself a little bit well yeah so this was before even like record players and stuff <clears throat> so okay. he, he created literally one of the first forms of sound recording he it was um a tin foil disc or like a tube mm -hmm. and he kind of talked into a cone and it created a vibration on the the tube as it spun and you could spin it back with the the like a needle the same needle you used to record spin it back and it would play the sound that wow. you recorded and yeah so that was a that's pretty, amazing it, it was amazing and the the fact that you could record sound and play it back was kind of revolutionary incredible. oh my god imagine like being in that room hearing the first like sound recording ever like just playing it back and hearing it actually is like oh my god yeah so that it's 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 pretty incredible to think about not being able to even record mm -hmm. sound and um listen to things i even as a kid i always remember having like a tape recorder around just being able to listen to myself or the rec answering machine you know what i mean just kind of always being able to listen to my own voice so mm -hmm. um just not even be able being able to do that it's kind of a crazy thing mm -hmm. but he unveiled the phonograph uh was the thing that made him famous it reproduced sounds by means of vibration of a stylus following a groove and a rotating disc mm -hmm. in december 1877 the public's amazement surrounding this invention was quickly followed by universal acclaim Edison was projected into worldwide prominence and was dubbed the Wizard of Menlo Park. The Wizard? Wizard. Ooh, so if you think wizard. about it, like, sound recording in terms of, like, um, uh, like, just recording sound for playing back in the future, it goes, it's so important in terms of, like, art and culture. It, mm -hmm. it, it's universal. You know, everyone kind of needs this technology. You need to record your music to, you know, play it back. So before 1877, that the idea of that wasn't really possible. So he got, got super famous, dubbed the Wizard of Menlo Park. He, yeah, it just crazy. It, it catapulted him into fame. Mm -hmm. um, studying this, this guy actually reminded me a lot of elon musk oh my god he's elon just like <laughs> just um kind of pushing the boundaries uh, in a lot of ways he will get into what he did um you know in terms of what he contributed but he put um he put a lot of his energy and money into just kind of studying and mm -hmm. doing things that people really didn't think were possible like um Let's see. Well, I have more questions. I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but... No, it's exciting. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to go back into this guy's early life. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mr. Tommy Edison. Tommy Edison. Aw. How old is he in this? Um, well, he was born. Uh, we're going to go back from, from when he was born. Uh, he made the phonograph when he was 30. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, so that's kind of not necessarily early in life, but kind of a um, middle point. Middle point. But it's crazy. For, for such a revolutionary invention, you know, it's mm -hmm. it's like at any time. Exactly. Uh, would have been, you know, amazing. Mm -hmm. But he was born in Milan, Ohio. Milan? Milan. Milan. 
Um, they, I think I've heard a guy pronounce it Mylan because they, you know, don't speak French, but oh. <laughs> they don't have that accent. Well, oh, yeah, oh, it's oh. just, you know, their American way of right. saying it. So shout out to Mylan, Ohio. Mylan, Ohio. What up? But in 1887, 1847, he was born. He was the seventh child to his parents. Lord. Oh, my God. He was the last child. Oh, um, But some luckily. of his siblings didn't survive to adulthood. That's actually really sad. Yeah, I'm not I'm not sure the context. I looked a little bit into it, but um, did a lot of the studying kind of just off the cuff, you know, not super in-depth. So shout out if you can found out, uh, you know, let me know what happened to was his siblings well they probably died from like disease because back then medicine wasn't as good yeah you know, like if they had a cut or something and it got infected and then that started spreading like it probably was not good news yeah or anything or any kind of mm-hmm. like um what do you call them just infection mm-hmm. um it was a long time ago you know like yeah. for shoot so uh I, I might bring it up a little bit later in my document here but the if you want to think about the time period he was born in 1847 hmm. um what do you call it red dead 2 always think of that as like a time reference right um red dead 2 takes place the main story in 1899 oh wow so that stuff was still so going like on. 1900 pretty much wow so it's like 50 years before mm-hmm. the sound was barely or no 50 years before edison was being born Wow. 25 years before sound was barely being like created or like recorded right so just, wow. i'm just using that as like a time reference after 1900 mm-hmm. um after kind of like you know this time 77 once sound and videos kind of starts being recorded things move really quickly for technology um that's usually how it goes yeah planes um start coming around i'll, I'll do one on planes you know maybe in the future but planes yeah. start coming around in 1900s yeah dude so um just it's it gets crazy um how much humans advance in a hundred years whereas before 1900 it was kind of a lot of the same kind of crap you know they were just living in um yeah just not a lot of uh work and survive advancement a little bit back in the day right procreate yeah build a family go to church (laughs) No, yeah, but it, it, I'm just kind of pointing out how things moved a lot slower right. um, back back then, even. I uh, wonder when it was, like, when people were the least stressed. Like, if it, was, if it was, like, back then when they had, like, not as much technology, not as much to worry about, maybe. Because hmm. I'm sure they were also worried about putting food on the table and everything. Like, I wonder at which period in life people are most, or, or sorry, least stressed least like stressed. what timeline we're talking about like just time periods and what's the least stressed i couldn't mm-hmm. even imagine or tell yeah. you because every generation i guess has their own set of, of like struggles growing up like there's a lot of stuff happening in the world every every single day so yeah that honestly is an interesting question because if you think about it we're we're at a point now kind of in in history mm-hmm. where everything is as accessible as it's ever been exactly. where things are as easy as they possibly could be mm-hmm. but we still have so much stress about like um you know maybe like uh wealth mm-hmm. um you know in disparities um or um just social stuff when it comes to social media being such a big thing today right. um there's so many things that um add stress that weren't around 100 years ago where you're just trying to survive day to day Mm -hmm. so it's it's such a crazy thing that um when you think about what could be the the least stressful time i think we were at a point where it was maybe the least stressful time uh kind of like a peak and then we're almost kind of going back Mm. down um or at least it seems like uh, yeah no i feel like the 2000s like 2000 2015 ish was a really good time ish <laughs> yeah think. like at least for me growing up that was kind of my childhood i had a lot of fun um but i also wasn't a grown adult facing like 
day-to-day struggles yeah um i imagine probably the 80s or the 90s because a bunch of people are doing drugs that's i was gonna say like even like the 90s <laughs> yeah um but i think it's always just kind of a hindsight it's 2020 yeah sort of thing absolutely you don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow shit right like, we could have another pandemic god forbid yeah you never know mm. um but we gotta be hopeful so uh let's make today a good day and tomorrow up to tomorrow even better <laughs> right no even but i mean every day is a new day fresh start I that's mean, right gotta get up and do it guys get up and do it mm-hmm. so self-care though self-care in a minute out there Edison was born. So he was born. Um, shout out. Thomas Edison. <laughs> let, let us know if you can um, figure out what his siblings died from. Because I was actually interested to know. Yeah, me too. He he developed partial deafness after a bout of scarlet fever is what it was attributed to. And then untreated ear infections. Yeesh. So he developed Ouch. partial deafness. He was deaf in one ear and then kind of mostly deaf in another ear. So he was just at hearing, like, 25% hearing? <laughs> yeah, so he's kind of like uh, Beethoven, you know? Oh, wow. <laughs> I think, just deaf. and um, you know, Beethoven's even more impressive because he was, I think, all the way deaf and, you know, creating beautiful music. Wow. But Can I be honest? Yeah. I didn't know he was deaf. <laughs> I think, or Bach, or... You know, I, I think multiple people that, like, were famous musicians were deaf multiple at, at least like one or two like couple uh, yeah i just think Beethoven was deaf. i don't know hmm. um i'm Shout getting a little bit of things know. wrong <laughs> literally yeah <laughs> just hit us up uh I, i've been i've been um interested in reaching out to or hearing from anybody who's interested in the show mm-hmm. we're going to be posting every friday keeping it up so just uh, please join yeah. us join us mm-hmm. contact us uh let us know yeah let us know we are uh, I'm talking about Edison here. He actually lied a lot mm. and created fake reasons for his deafness. Mm-hmm. He's kind of a little bit of a prankster. Cool. So um, he was barely hearing in one of his ears and he was deaf in the other. It's alleged that Edison would listen to a music player or piano by clamping his teeth into the wood, uh, into like a piece of wood to absorb the sound waves into his skull. So What? Yeah, he would um just like clamp onto like the piano leg while it was playing and and feel the vibrations he was tasting music taste the, <laughs> taste, <laughs> taste the music he's like mm, great tune yeah give, give me a little more of that <laughs> or a music player so he would do the same thing for a music player if it was playing loud enough um but that was in his old age uh, it says as he got older he, he, edison believed that his hearing loss would allow uh, allowed him to avoid distraction and concentrate more easily on his work wow modern what a great way to to look at it right he seemed really passionate about studying and like educating himself which he, i imagine back then was like the only thing you could really do he was always studying yeah like so he was it's cool that he made the most of it mm-hmm. um but yeah he he actually modern day historians and medical professionals have suggested that he may have had ADHD. So, wow. Yeah, so he was kind of a little bit all over the place, a little bit hyperactive. Um, Me too. Uh, <laughs> right, but um, like when I work, I like to put in um, headphones or um, what do you call them? Earmuffs just to cover up the sound. And, um, you know, it helped him as well. So, mm-hmm. shout out to Edison. He started working at a young age and this leads us to our next question um how old was edison when he started working how old was edison when he started working we got, do you have yes. yes we got three options we got four 13 uh and then he never worked uh, uh a traditional job a day in his life hmm white man siblings died seven siblings so I'm guessing their family could probably afford to have a big family. So I'm gonna go with he never worked a day in his life. No, I um I put that in there just to because I damn it I I compared him to Elon Musk. Uh, uh, I don't know if that fool ever actually had a a real job in his life, but 
he should make him work at McDonald's. He would get fired within a day, man. Yeah. No, he no he would um try and take the manager's position and um try and change everything around. <laughs> say like I could do it better. Uh, he'll be like, I'll make you a manager if you pay me. No, like he, with the the Twitter verification. <laughs> oh my god! You could buy to just be verified. Yeah, anyone can work if you pay. <laughs> no, he yeah. Any, but I'm just gonna kind of. <laughs> um, <laughs> We're just ragging on him. <laughs> yeah, no, he actually actually did point out that he started working young. So oh that's why god. I put four. Um, but he was 13 uh, when he started oh. working. He uh, not necessarily when he started working. He might have started working a little bit earlier. Mm-hmm. But I was kind of just reading through the wikipedia article on this guy he made 50 dollars a week profit oh as my. a news butcher oh my god a news butcher so i'm guessing he was cutting like the newspapers he actually yeah mm-hmm. like they it was he he wouldn't like wrap the newspapers and do all that himself he sold candy as well as uh vegetables wow, what a hustler yeah he was a hustler and Damn. 50 dollars a week that's not even like bad today that's that's 200 2000 you know 500 bucks uh, a year oh my god I no think. but i wonder what it is nowadays because back then currency was well, 50 I, bucks a week was probably a lot of money back in the day yeah no that that had to have been uh i have a comparison here uh 10 times 240 so uh 5 to 120 uh yeah it's like yeah so i can imagine that's well <laughs> over uh, a couple hundred bucks uh, a week Damn. which is pretty good money but yeah so he was he was young when he was making a lot of money i wonder what his siblings did i know i mean I don't, i'm not really sure that i i really wanted to, to do a little more studying but mm-hmm. i'm doing this a little bit on the fly uh we got some technical difficulties on our last record so mm-hmm. we're just trying to like really really get into the the habit of getting a recording mm-hmm. and uh, get it out to you guys educate the world out there and exactly. educate ourselves along the way for sure so um i wanted to do a little bit more studying on the guy because he's actually really interesting but maybe we could do a part two later but part two for sure and mm-hmm. maybe kind of go into more depth of who the guy was because i don't really know um too much about him just i just was studying about his kind of um early life and his uh backstory a little mm-hmm. bit um but when he was 15 he saved a three-year-old, Jimmy McKenzie, from being struck by a runaway train. Oh, my gosh. A runaway train. Yeah. Runaway train. So, it must have just, like, been going and the brakes were, you know, not working um, or something. But the the boy's father, I don't have his name, but he was a telegraph operator. Mm-hmm. So, he owned kind of... A, he worked in the train station and he was responsible for, uh, or no, he was, what did it say? He was, he owned, like, he worked in a train station and he was kind of one of the higher ups there. Okay. So he was so grateful that the Edison saved his boy that he trained him as a telegraph operator. Oh, wow. So, uh, so when he was, when he was young, even, he kind of learned uh he was a real hard worker he was selling uh, all kinds of stuff and then Mm -hmm. he also learned a lot of kind of good skills when it came to um the like learning telegraph operating that's a pretty like practical skill he actually developed some technology in telegraphs uh, as we'll get into a little bit in the future that's so amazing that he got that opportunity yeah Especially by just being a good good Samaritan. The so I was kind of theorizing when I was reading this that maybe he he put the kid there. He th- he set it up himself, and he saved the kid uh, in a way to get in good with this professional guy to get a good job. But at the same time, like if he dragged this kid on the train tracks and then pulled him off, I'm pretty sure the kid would have said something too. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, well, he was three, so. Yeah, but at the same time, like a three-year-old could, I mean, he would be traumatized if he got dragged out in front of a train that was run away, yeah. you know? I don't know. Nah, That'd be an interesting theory, though. No, I was, I was mostly joking, but I think it'd be funny. <laughs> He's um, like, come here, kid. Right. Stand here for a second. I'm not going to put that on Edison. He did, I apparently, kill an elephant. 
I didn't get into that. Oh, wait. That's another... there, there was an episode on Bob's Burgers, huh? Yeah. So there was a, a teacher who was real into Tom Edison. What a dick. Yeah. Uh, that Tom Edison. Kind of a strange concept. Mm-hmm. He's a real cool guy, so I could get being really into him, but he did, I believe, kill an elephant. I didn't really look into that, but that's in part two. You know, was teaser. that intentional? Yeah, he was trying oh. to... So, so actually... a um spoiler a little bit for <laughs> for part two uh um, sorry we don't have to well no i it, i was just thinking because what when you said that it reminded me of the the origin of the electrocution mm-hmm. i believe he was trying to prove that nikola tesla's direct current or alternating current mm-hmm. i don't i don't know which one's which he's trying to prove that nikola tesla's current was dangerous and more deadly so he was going to electrocute this elephant and say like look if you um you know make a mistake you could easily die like in a second Mm -hmm. so like he was trying to make it seem like um prove it on this big innocent elephant (laughs) yeah so that i and we'll we'll get into that when i when i talk about tesla because Mm -hmm. i was starting a thing about tesla and apparently he worked for benjamin frank or who is this guy thomas edison. thomas edison he worked for this guy for like a little bit kind of as an apprentice so wow. that's an interesting dynamic so maybe we'll get into that at a, at a later date hmm. but if you could choose one guy to have dinner with who would you choose i get this all the time even in so like all i ever did mm-hmm. i've heard this all the time this is something they'll ask you like on interviews too like it's a weird freaking question i don't even know i didn't get asked that on my interview i know but <laughs> It's just a weird question. Um, who would I? Who would I have dinner with? Have dinner with. It'd have to be like um, a good a good cook, you know. I think Ramsey's a real piece of shit. I'd say Bourdain <laughs> had to be Bourdain, Anthony Bourdain. Okay. Super interesting guy. I don't even really know. I've never watched his show. I I really want to watch Parts Unknown, um, and kind of learn more about the guy because he was super interesting Mm -hmm. um but unfortunately he was like a rock star chef and he he killed himself um took his own life at one point um so that's an unfortunate thing that that happened to him Mm. Uh, but he was super interesting and his favorite restaurant to go to uh and when he went to la was in and out (laughs) so that's all i need that's enough that's all i need to know about him so he's the guy okay that's a good answer what about you my first dog oh the little kofi kofi you'd make him like a dinner and everything probably Mm. but human who would i hmm i don't know i want to meet someone great i guess Someone amazing, I guess. Someone. Uh oh. Um. Mr. Incredible. No, no, no. The um. Fuck. What was his name? The guy for that played Aladdin, the first one. Oh, Tim. Um, Tom. T- Tim Robbins. What's his name? Uh. John. No. Uh, Robin Williams. Robin Williams. Yeah. I'd want to have dinner with him. Yeah, he he was a pretty um. I think amazing person and comedian. Do you see the video when he danced with the cowboy, the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders? Cheerleaders? No. It was funny. I did not. I have not seen that. He seems like a real fun guy, though. I could. Yeah. I could see that being a fun time. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Um. Anyway, let so. us know who you guys would have dinner with. On yeah, the for sure. Comments below, please. I think that's interesting. I, I, I never really thought about that question, but mm-hmm. I kind of came up with a good one, and I think. Um, that Robin Williams would be interesting because, yeah, I, I don't know much about that guy either. So yeah. it could be cool to kind of open up with him on a, on a personal level and mm-hmm. kind of see both of those guys. Yeah. Um, but where it was I, he... How Nikola Tesla was apprenticing him? Right. Oh, um, that actually isn't part of what I wrote because I was going to save that for the Tesla episode. But um spoiler after so after oh 
thing. I, I kind of moved a little fast here Ooh. in my document, but after he became a telegraph operator, he was able to study qualitative analysis and conducted chemical experiments until he left the job rather than being fired hmm. after being held responsible for a near collision of two trains. Oh. So he kind of prioritized his, his studying and his, his experiments over a lot of his jobs, as we'll find out. He was a little bit kind of reckless. It's he was 15 funny. at the time. So when he had the job and he almost crashed uh, two trains. That's so. really dangerous. But it's funny that he was slacking from his job by studying. We, that's what I'm saying. Like he was experimenting. He never actually got such like a formal education, mm -hmm. but he was super curious and super interested in just learning and experimenting. So he did chemical experiments and he, yeah, he was going to be fired, but he chose to leave. Mm. So he didn't get fired. Smart. All right. Um, that's kind of nice of them. Especially if he almost caused the collision of two trains. Right. Yeah, that, that would be that'd be crazy. Um, so after after that, Edison obtained the exclusive right to sell newspapers on the road, and with the aid of four assistants, mm -hmm. he set in type and printed the Grand Truck Grand Trunk Herald, which he sold with his other papers. Uh, this began Edison's long streak of entrepreneurial ventures. He discovered his talents as a businessman. Ultimate, ultimately, his entrepreneurship was central to the formation of 14 companies, including General Electric. So he was responsible for kind of innovating a lot in the business world and being an entrepreneur in kind of existing businesses, uh, even at a young age. So this was between the ages of 15 and 19. Mm hmm Damn, that kid is a hard worker. I believe. Hmm. Um, as as far as you know, how I studied it, that's kind of the the impression that I got is between mm -hmm. fifteen and nineteen. So, when he was nineteen, he moved to Louisville, Kentucky, where he worked for Western Union, which mm -hmm. I believe is a bank. He worked. That sounds familiar. Yeah, it's. I think it's a huge bank. I think it's still around. Mm -hmm. Western Union. Uh, he worked the Associated Press Bureau Newswire. He had a little wow. bit of experience in the news. Um, so he worked the Newswire, which basically means he gathers news reports and sells them to newspapers. So he moved up from selling newspapers to people to selling news to newspapers. Wow. So that's pretty cool. so strong. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, yeah, like that's that's a pretty crazy, um, pretty crazy thing at 19, you know. So, wow. um, I, uh, I mean, I don't know. When I was 19, I was working, I was a, I was a dishwasher, you know, mm -hmm. uh, working at, uh, you know, pizza restaurant, mm -hmm. just washing dishes, not, not doing nothing, but yeah. I don't know when I got, I don't know if it was when I was 16 or six or 17 or 16 when I started my first job, but, um, I just wanted to do it to have extra money, honestly. Yeah. I didn't want to work extra shifts just because, I mean, who does? Unless you like your job. I wish. Yeah, I wish I had a a, a job I liked. I mean, it's all right. You know, I'm still working there. So, mm. you know, there's, like, there's, you can say that. So, Starting a new job, which I'm excited for. Hey. But uh, mm. we'll see how mm. it goes. Mm. <laughs> mm. Yeah, that's super awesome. I'm really proud of you. Thank I'm you. <laughs> I'm really excited, too. Hopefully, I don't make a fool of myself. No, it's going to be good. <laughs> I, am, I believe in you. I have Thank you. the utmost faith in you. Thank you, my love. So when Edison was 19, moved to Kentucky, uh, he, ba -ba -da -ba -ba, ba -da -ba -ba -ba. he requested to work the night shift so he could read and experiment. <laughs> at night? So in the daytime. Oh, in the well, morning. He, yeah, he worked at night so he could experiment in the, in the day. He oh. Was, he was always on on the go learning especially at a young age mm. he was experimenting and reading all the time studying um kind of got him into trouble before you hey know kid, he, stop studying <laughs> he well he almost crashed two trains you know right. what i mean so it's like you gotta prior have some priorities mm. but now i could just imagine him like reading his textbook or whatever and then in the background you just hear the the train right and then he's like oh 
Wait a minute. Wait. <laughs> what was I doing? Where am I? Where are the trains I was responsible for? Oh, there they are. Hmm. Meters apart. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine like the context of what that was like. But Man. That's pretty scary to almost crash two trains. My butt cheeks would have clenched my pantaloons so hard. <laughs> uh, he actually got into trouble on his last job and one Surprise. night in 1967 he was working with a lead acid battery when he spilt sulfuric acid onto the floor oh no it ran between the floorboards and onto his boss's desk below no that's the worst the next series morning of Edison was fired. events yeah the so next he, morning what he was fired yeah so he he will because he was just experimenting all the time he had good jobs mm -hmm. he was like successful after he lost his last job he was successful selling newspapers you know he got a different job um after he moved then he was experimenting some more and you know was forced to leave that job because he got fired that's unfortunate he's yeah. just a curious guy but i definitely could imagine as an employer this is not the best employee who's distracted yeah studying even though he's studying which good for him that's awesome he's not he's literally spilling sulfuric acid onto his boss's desk unintentionally <laughs> but yeah no he's good for like the world but not mm -hmm. for you know his employer he's can't, not a good employee be, yeah he can't be contained for sure mm -hmm. um but we're moving on to when edison is about 22 years old mm. what uh, and then we have a next question. Mm. Uh, question number three. What was Edison's first patent? Mm. We have three options here. The phonograph okay. would be his um, one option. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, the electric vote recorder mm. would be a second option. Okay. And then we have the little three-prong outlets for plugging things in. I'll go with the first one. First one. Uh, phonograph? Yes. He did patent the phonograph. Yeah. That was one of his things, but it was not his first. Oh. So. Um, so did I get it wrong? Yes. You're wrong. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> his first patent was for the electric vote recorder. Okay. Um, the U um, U.S. patent number 90,646, 90, which was granted granted on june 1st 1869 uh it wasn't a big hit really uh, so he moved to new york and he lived in the basement of one of his mentors this guy franklin leonard pope who together they developed the technology to send two telegraphs at once wow yes they Just actually two smart guys yeah living together so they they um it was one uh this guy pope was one of um edison's mentors and they kind of developed this unique technology, uh, which 22, I believe, that must have been 67. The um, phone was being developed in the same era and came out in uh, 1877 or 76, I believe. So this was around the time when the telegraph was kind of almost being phased out, but he was developing technology to make it even more advanced. Uh, at the time which was which is pretty cool so by mm. go ahead no no i'm just saying man that's really cool yeah i mean i i've t telegraph seems really complicated but mm -hmm. um if it was the the most advanced technology at the time and you're kind of perfecting it you know and making it even better that's mm -hmm. pretty awesome right like, there i can't imagine doing that with um like quantum computers or like there's so much that like different advanced technologies now that like i feel like i can't even imagine that edison necessarily would be as um influential today like i feel like he was just like the perfect guy for his time to make such like advancements maybe he would have been you know something crazy today but right. no, and what's also really cool is like he got fired from a lot of his jobs <laughs> you know like yeah he couldn't keep a job he was living in this guy's basement like he was doing great things but um i don't know it just kind of goes to show that anyone can shine at any point in their life you know even if it kind of feels like you're going in the wrong direction you're just going in your own direction yeah you know like you don't know what's gonna happen along the way but i mean he as long as it makes you happy and it definitely seemed to make edison happy to to study and to do all these kinds of experiments and then like 
I don't know, just to create something really great, you know? Yeah, and he, because, yeah, he was always just following his passion. Mm -hmm. And he was living in the basement of this guy who he knew he was a mentor to him. He wasn't even, like, a family member or anything. Mm. He was just some guy. Uh, So, you know, essentially he was homeless. He was living in this guy's basement. But he lived in the basement, and this guy allowed him to work in there as well. So they were doing experiments together Mm -hmm. by... 1876 edison was 32 years old his major invention was the establishment of an industrial uh, one, like one of his first major inventions was the establishment of an industrial research lab in 1770 sorry 1876 hmm. it was built in menlo park it was part of the raritan township which they ended up naming after him wow. so they changed the name of the town to edison township it's um in middlesex county new jersey it'd be cool to go there yeah honestly but that's really really far i would love i would love to go there um check out the east coast Mm -hmm. i've only ever been to like georgia and i don't think we saw the ocean so i think it would be cool to um check out the east coast Mm -hmm. uh i want to go to new york heck of bad yeah but new york new New York. york do you think we could keep a few pet rats no <laughs> i mean i'm sure we could find some pet rats but like yeah those those things are all over the place but very very gross very gross what do you think cinderella would do if she was in in new york nowadays um she she she'd do some singing probably <laughs> some um, sewing yeah no that that sounds like a, a horrible uh horrible time yes She'd probably be the crazy lady just knitting sweaters for the rats. Just, yeah, no, the, yeah. Come here. The, oh, we, have, gus, gus. we haven't watched that movie together, right? The Enchanted or whatever it's called? No, I don't think we have. It was one of my favorite movies growing yeah, up, one. though. We should watch that. We should. But that, yeah, that's what that reminds me of. <laughs> anyway, so where are we at? We are at he, um, the, what's it called? The uh, Industrial Research Lab. So mm-hmm. that was actually one of his big kind of like contributions to um the science science, yeah so he um paid for this research lab with the funds from the sale of his quadruplex telegraph so he developed after developing the um technology to send two telegraphs at once Mm -hmm. he actually developed the technology to send four telegraphs at once wow as well bumping up those numbers those are rookie numbers yeah so that like that happened right before the telephone Mm -hmm. came out because he created this lab in 76 Mm -hmm. so he an interesting story about the the telegraph he demonstrated the telegraph the quadruplex telegraph he wasn't sure that his original plan to sell it for four to five thousand was right someone was gonna buy it for four or five thousand dollars so he went back to one of his old employers western union uh he asked them to make a bid and he was surprised to hear them offer ten thousand dollars rather than four or five. Ooh, ooh, that so was he, such a smart move on his part. Yeah, he held off a little wow. bit, you know. Don't be smart. Yeah, don't don't make a decision like that Mm-mm. super quickly. Let it uh, sit for a second. He got a, a second bid, and doubled his his uh, potential money there. So um, wow. we're gonna go to our next question. I have a another follow up question. How much is I was going to say, like, it seemed like what he was selling it for was already really expensive. I was going to be like, oh, he needs to make it cheaper. Yeah. But no. Well, that's like the thing. I, I don't even I don't know who bought it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I could have done a little more yeah. looking into that aspect of it. But the the quadruplex telegraph, you never hear about the quadruplex telegraph. You only hear about the telegraph mm-hmm. and then the telephone right after, you know, like this technology wasn't revolutionary necessarily it might have actually contributed to the um the way that the telephone developed but Mm -hmm. i'll have to do a little bit more looking into that part two but the thing is like he really scored Mm -hmm. um with this deal um so yeah for ten thousand, pretty freaking awesome Mm -hmm. so next question is how much is ten thousand from nine uh from 1876 in today's money 1876 Ten thousand. Oh, do I get any options? Oh yeah, sorry. Um, I was just also thinking about Red Dead, how like the money <laughs> you get, like the, you only you don't even get that much money. But no. 
when you get like a thousand it's like hell the money mm -hmm. like a lot so especially when you go into the shop and like the oat cakes are like 25 cents each yeah i'm like oh wow and then if you don't have that much money you're like 25 cents for an oat cake i think not for sure no but yeah so sorry about that i didn't give you the um the options but we have three options okay ten thousand from 1876 is it fifty thousand one hundred thousand or two hundred forty thousand in today's money i'm gonna go big i'm gonna go two hundred forty thousand hey you're right yay the uh, first one i could have gone a little bit um and kind of put it uh, i think it would have been interesting to put that one in the middle but i used my suggestion would have been to probably do like 56 yeah just more because like yeah the 50 100 000. yeah you know just kind of throwing those random numbers so it's like oddly specific a little more random because mm -hmm. the actual um calculation that i found for that is two hundred thirty nine thousand five hundred dollars <laughs> yeah so he was super oh, grateful shit. to accept that money he opened up his research lab right after um promptly what would you do with that with that much money back in the day yeah uh... with i mean well because things are a lot different too mm -hmm. like on top of it being worth a lot more like there's a lot of different factors that play into how much things are worth mm -hmm. so like he he created a, he bought like a whole building in in new york or in new jersey and like opened it up for research so like if i could have done something like that like man like i would have bought a building or yeah <sighs> Sheesh, yeah i mean property yeah just mm -hmm. shoot like that's the smartest thing do you uh, know if, if uh the lab that he made back in the day is still a school nowadays or anything because i know they like to build like schools or like research is. labs um i mean it must be um what's it called menlo menlo park lab uh Ooh. owns laboratories to pursue practical commercial applications of research it was in his Menlo Park Laboratory that Thomas Edison invented the phonograph and developed a commercially viable incandescent light bulb. Um, I don't know if it's still around. Menlo Park Labs. It looks like there is laboratories there, but... I could imagine they probably don't want to use the old building. They probably just keep it for, like, yeah. museum well, this, purposes. This, this picture here is hella old, so it must mm -hmm. have been, like... It was built over 100 years ago. It's a know, cute little shack. I mean, it's not little, but... <laughs> super yeah. cool i would have been so proud if i was him for sure and i mean they they made innovations there something interesting mm -hmm. actually we'll get into i'm super like interested in actually so i'm really excited um what he did with his laboratory so drugs <laughs> maybe uh i wish i did a little looked a little more into it to say definitively whether or not he did drugs because that would have been cool to know i mean i feel like back then they probably did not much else to do yeah and especially if he was experimenting with, like, chemicals here and there. Like, I could imagine they probably found LSD and was like, hmm, I wonder what this tastes like. Uh, I think that came around a little bit later. I mean, it's just a, a comparison, you know, just the thought. Yeah. Food for thought. No, they did They did hardcore drugs. They did, like, heroin and, like, Coke and stuff. There Wasn't there, like, Coke in Coca-Cola back in the day? Oh, yeah. Mm. I think so. Straight up coca leaves and like refined cocaine and shit. Yeah. If I had coke back in the day, I probably would have been successful too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, I in, mean, Coca Cola. In Red Dead, there's cocaine gum. Yeah, I remember seeing that. But doesn't that kind of take take down part of your um it, like health bar? The or core. Something? It damages the core. Like yeah. it doesn't. It gives you a short boost, but then it makes it worse for you. Yeah, no, we have this uh, guy at my last place. You can definitely tell he had some cocaine gum. <laughs> cocaine gum. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, he was, uh, he was just talking really crazy. Like, he, he gave me a piggy bank, a tiny one, with a bunch of change, and I had to count it out, and he still owed me money. And he was like, are we done? Are we done? Oh, oh I sold you a dollar? Because I give you this change. How much is this change? How much? Oh, okay. Uh, let me, let me check. Give me one second. What, real fast. How much was it again? Okay. Okay. Uh, Can I leave now? And I was like, um, no. Yeah. Can you please you pay for Yeah, you just want to get yourself? rid of those type of people. Yeah. No, he was, um, 
It's all right. It's just Who's not. Leaving? I just I just don't want to deal with them for as long for any longer than you have to. Just like uh, just yeah. like please, you know. The door. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> handle your business and get out. Mm-hmm. Um. Not too much trouble though, but he was probably not <clears throat> doing drugs. Thomas Edison. I mean, hopefully not. He might have been. So I mean, check check this out. Hmm. This this is where it kind of gets into where it reminds me of Elon Musk. So maybe he he, do, he was doing drugs, you know, if he's like Elon. Right. But uh, check this out. Menlo Park, which was where the, the laboratory that he created, mm-hmm. became the first institution set up with the specific purpose of producing constant technological innovation and improvement. Okay. Very cool. You know, super awesome. Edison was legally credited with most of the inventions produced there, though many employees carried out research and development under his direction. So a lot of people worked for the guy, but he took all the credit. That's kind of messed up. I think it's kind of like Disney. <laughs> Sounds a little familiar, yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of like, you know, how it happens today a lot of times. You know, you're working for a company, you have the opportunity to, you know, actually put in a lot of work and you're doing a lot of the hard work. You might make certain innovations here and there, but that's really at sad. the end of the day, yeah, the the guy who's paying the bills and who is like you know started the whole thing he gets all the credit damn it edison yeah so you should have known better he his staff was generally told to carry out his directions in conducting research mm-hmm. he drove them hard to produce results so it sounds a lot like uh, another guy we we know Yi long ma Yi long ma if you guys haven't seen him ah. um, what is what's his name Yi Long Ma. Yi Long Ma. It's this guy that looks exactly like Elon Musk. Yeah. They were going to interview him on H3, but he big timed him. Oh, Got dude. It. Didn't he ask for money? He asked for hella money. Or not hella, but like Ethan's like, it's it's a 10 minute phone call. Like, what? how much do you want? Like, they offered him like 100 bucks or 500 bucks. Or oh, something. my God. No, especially for Yi Long Ma. Especially uh, he makes the TikToks and he's like, uh, money money i give to yeah, you yeah he doesn't know english but he he pretends to be elon, elon Musk. but the asian the the chinese version because he is a chinese person he gives me money on tiktok <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah not real money yeah he flaunts his money he pretends to be elon it's pretty great i think it's isn't it fake money i, I mean it might be i don't know if it's if it's like chinese money or if it's like american or fake or whatever but i wonder what what the currency is over there um chinese um yeah i don't know i think J- japanese yen. yuan yuan oh yeah yuan i remember them saying that on h3 it's also called ren ren minbi ren, ren minbi all right also called yuan cool we'll just call it yuan 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 Ma. <laughs> he could have gone with that name too. Yuan Ma. Yuan Ma. <laughs> but um. Money Musk. Yeah, no, he was just driving them hard. Yeah, no, yeah, he he employees. wasn't he wasn't a great guy. He wasn't mm-hmm. a great um manager boss. Mm-hmm. Um, that's kind of funny considering that his bosses fired him because <laughs> he was slacking. Right. Well, he 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 just more more than. He just prioritized the results. You know, mm-hmm. he was more interested in the scientific exploration. Right. So. Well, I mean, as long as we all discovered it. But I do kind of wish we could have given credit to the people that actually, uh, like, built a lot of this stuff. Yeah. There's actually a lot of guys who don't get credit throughout mm-hmm. history that kind of studied under people. Like, there's, you know, the Pythagorean theorem. You've heard of that? Yes. There, This guy, Pythagoras had a similar situation where he had a school of people under him Mm -hmm. and they were studying and some of the people that worked under him if they created some sort of innovation he got the credit for it so he might not have even thought of the the theorem himself bless you thank you one more one more bless you once more thank you all right welcome back so the this lab this lab came around in 76 um well, he was 30s in his 30s at the time. It's kind of a big deal, you know. Mm-hmm. But um, in uh, in the around 1980, he 
met this guy, William Joseph Hammer. Mm -hmm. He was hired at the... I'm not sure. I think... I'm not sure if he was hired at the laboratory. Mm -hmm. um, But I have written here that he was hired and became the chief engineer uh, of Edison Lamp Works. That Mm. answers my question. Uh, So Edison was making lamps. By the time he created the light bulb it was he created the light bulb in 1880 mm-hmm. so yeah so the lamp edison Lampworks was uh a, another company that he created to make more light bulbs this guy william joseph hammer made a bunch of light bulbs and the it's quoted that he was a pioneer of incandescent electric lighting so wow. that's another guy that was kind of maybe not getting a whole lot of credit for some of the innovations that were made mm-hmm. with um the light bulb right so i don't know if i have it written here but i want to give some interesting info uh, i'll touch back on this i'll highlight it in my notes mm-hmm. just so i don't um you know repeat it in the future but i'm just gonna highlight it as a nice bright color pink but uh, at least eight other people actually created light bulb so he wasn't the inventor of the light bulb by any means wow um they all had flaws though such as extremely short life and requiring high electric current to operate which made them difficult to apply on a mm-hmm. large scale commercially so they were probably really hot and caused a lot of fires if they if hot that was the case um yeah so it's like they hot they burned out really quickly mm-hmm. they uh um, all kinds of they required a lot of energy so that's really the thing that sets edison apart is Mm -hmm. that he made the the light bulb commercially viable um he made it cool it's kind of like in the way that elon does like he makes he's made space travel kind of more obtainable uh, obtainable, yeah like cheap Mm -hmm. uh kind of more cool so it's like it was kind of like in that sense making science more accessible really in with in, in a good way but maybe not the best guy at the same time he really had to like dummy proof it though because i could imagine you would be like these people like they've never seen a light bulb in their life you know well yeah and so in in his lifetime like people had never seen a light bulb Mm -hmm. but in his lifetime he created the light bulb um the like the commercial electric light bulb Mm -hmm. and he also created an electric electricity company to distribute electricity to people oh so my it's like God. he he was really innovative in terms of like what he was able to achieve um wouldn't that be a monopoly though back in the day kind of i think there the that the, the the problem was that there was existing gas utility companies mm. that were already kind of a monopoly so he was coming in on them and being like hey like Fuck you new guys. kid on the block yeah so <laughs> there and then other companies also came up so it's like there's not i think you know, it was legislated enough to where the monopoly didn't really happen. Mm-hmm. But, you know. Uh, That's also kind of good. You're balancing it out. Yeah. New big dog on the block. Right. Um, so, they... Um, when when he was making the light bulb, he tried using a filament made of cardboard. <sighs> carbonized with compressed lamp black. This burnt out too quickly to provide lasting light he then Mm. experimented with different grasses and canes such as hemp palmetto uh hemp and palmetto before settling on bamboo as the best filament so they were literally using grass to like burn (laughs) um grass in like a little vacuum i imagine Mm -hmm. i think that's how it works but they continued trying to improve the design and on november 4th 1879 filed for u.s patent 22 uh, sorry 200 Two hundred twenty-three thousand eight hundred ninety-eight. So his first patent, I believe, was eighty thousand. They're already on two hundred thousand, so they're like they're they're making patents like crazy. Oh my god! Uh, Especially when you have a whole <clears throat> laboratory. Yeah, exactly. So, well, because this this is like all the patents ever made. So it's mm-hmm. like innovations are happening and people are making things and right. like yeah. So he's making a lot of them too. Um. For the, then that was for an electric lamp using a carbon filament or strip coiled mm-hmm. and connected to platina contact wires. 
plat, plat, platina. Platina. The patent describes several ways of creating a carbon filament, including cotton and linen thread, wood, wood splints, papers coiled in various ways. Uh, it wasn't. It was not until several months after the patent was granted that Edison and his team discovered that carbonized bamboo filament could last over 1,200 hours. So oh they discovered God. something even better after they filed for the patent. Mm -hmm. So they were still making innovations like right, like months after. They're like, oh, shoot, like this is even better. So that's wow. cool. No, they, I mean, it's good that they didn't take any time to rest. They were like, come on, get it while it's hot. Always be innovating. So mm -hmm. that's kind of Edison's like legacy is he was always kind of just learning and studying, experimenting. Every day I'm hustling, hustling, hustling. One of the quotes that Edison is famous for saying and is, is every day I'm hustling, mm, hustling, mm, hustling. Mm, mm. <laughs> I wish that's probably more influential than what I'm going to say. <laughs> no, he said, um, I, I didn't, I have not failed once. I have succeeded in finding a hundred or like a thousand ways that don't work. Okay, Thomas Edison. <laughs> Something like that. So, yeah. He... Wait, wait, wait. So, was he saying, like, I've never failed? Or is he more like, I've never failed because I've failed so many times that it's brought me here? No, well, kind of. It, it, the, the, the expression, it's kind of just saying, like, even in your failure, you're learning what not to do. Oh, It's like, okay. you're, you're never actually losing anything when you fail. You're, you're always using it as a way to... to further right educate yourself yeah to get closer and closer to the goal i see so you wouldn't make the same mistake twice if it exactly. blows up on you so he knows he knows all the ways that don't work so he's mm. gonna do the the way that does work okay trial and error but i at first i thought he was just kind of being like i've never failed guys <laughs> yeah he's, he's a little bit i mean pretentious yeah well it's the type of personality that's like really really kind of manic you know like he yeah. was always experimenting and learning and creating so it makes sense that he's one of these people that is really kind of influential even if it was i could tell he has adhd yeah <laughs> but you know potentially um you know no, no one's perfect so he might yeah. have had some some other stuff going on but there um another thing that i want to touch on he formed the electric light company at the edison electric light company in 17 Sorry, 1878 mm -hmm. in New York with several financiers, including J.P. Morgan uh, and Spencer Trask and the members and the members of the Vanderbilt family. Mm -hmm. Edison made the first public demonstration of his incandescent light bulb on December 31st, 1879 in Menlo Park. And it was during this time that he said, we will make electricity so cheap that only the rich will burn candles. <gasps> Ooh. Ooh, that's really cool yeah so this this quote made me think of cars because when cars first came around there wasn't roads mm -hmm. you know what i mean so the idea of owning a car was so crazy that's like we can't even drive anywhere so mm -hmm. why would we want a car right so it's like that's kind of funny that they were like we're not gonna build roads yet we're gonna build cars first well, but that's they the didn't thing, even like, know that they would need roads. They had carriages, right? Yeah. So a horse and carriage, but then they strapped a motor on it, and now it can go by itself. But now they want to make it more efficient, so they're going to make pavement to make the roads smoother because they don't need the horses. Right. So it's like they just have to constantly be making innovations. <laughs> at this, like Horsepower. Horse, exactly. So Ford made the um, created the term horsepower, I believe. Mm -hmm. Um or someone, I think it was Ford. We still have to watch Ford versus Ferrari. Yeah, I fell asleep. But the the thing is that he made it accessible and cheap to drive a car. And the mm -hmm. same thing is kind of what Edison did with electricity, with light bulbs. Mm -hmm. He's like, we're going to... He, he, he came to the most rich people in the world, J.P. Morgan, Spencer Trask, and the Vanderbilt people. And he's like, this is going to change the world. I need your money to um, put as much... Um, you know, research and time into this as we can to make it even better. Mm -hmm. So he got hella money from these guys and was able to make an even better filament that didn't burn out, lasted for, you know, over a thousand hours. They could turn it on and off. They even created a, a utility company to distribute the electricity to people's homes. It was a revolutionary time that happened really, really quickly because he was so um, kind of... Uh, like inspiring and influential. Mm -hmm. 
he got a lot of people on board, a lot of money involved, and uh, just really kind of invigorated the world behind uh, electricity. Wow. Um, so he actually had competitors at this time. Mm -hmm. This guy... Uh, sorry, this guy, Louis Latimer, uh, was a draftsman expert. Fucking Louis Latimer. <laughs> Pretty cool name. I know. I like. He sounds, sounds like, like a villain a, name. Louis Latimer. I was gonna say he sounds like a character in a uh, Marvel comic book. So yeah. He could be a villain. I was thinking like Van Helsing. <laughs> Van Helsing. Vladimir. It's yeah. It's just always um, it's just always funny that in Marvel comics they use alliteration. So like Peter Parker. Um, PP. Yeah. So it's always like. <laughs> um, but he was a draft. Excuse me. He, he was, was a, a what? A draftsman mm. um, and an expert witness in patent litigation. Okay. So he was kind of a um, really educated guy. He began working for the United States Electric Lighting Company run by Edison's rival, Hiram X. Maxim. So he had a rival in the electricity business. That was an answer to your question about the monopoly. Hmm. There's this company, the United States Electric Lighting Company, not the Edison Electric Lighting Company. Okay. I think. Yeah, Edison Electric Light Company. That's the other one. I would rather go with the guy that made it first. That's what I'm saying. Mm. So that's, well, he didn't necessarily make it first, but he's kind of like, like I'm saying, he's like the Elon. He's the one who makes yeah. it spicy and like exciting. Yeah. Available to everyone. Yeah. Um, so on... On October 8, 1883, the U.S. Patent Office ruled that Edison's patent was based on the work of William E. Sawyer mm -hmm. and was therefore invalid. Litigation continued for nearly six years. In 1885, Latimer switched camps and started working f with Edison. Nice. So he was... If you can't beat him, join him. Yeah, this guy Latimer was on the um, other guy's side. During this um, legal battle... Mm -hmm. The, said that Edison's work was based on this other guy's work. This guy Latimer joined Edison's side, and then in October, on October sixth, eighteen eighty nine, a judge ruled that elec Edison's electric light improvement claim for a filament of carbon of carbon of high resistance was valid. To avoid possible court battle with yet another competitor, Joseph Swan, whose British patent had been awarded a year before edison's mm. uh he and swan formed a joint company called ediswan to manufacture <laughs> uh, and market the invention in britain so this he could have named it sweatison <laughs> sweatison <laughs> sweaty sun sweaty sun. so this guy lewis latimer he was kind of a, a legal guy mm -hmm. and, it, and the impression that i got from reading this was that he really helped out um edison when it came to kind of um negotiating with competitors and really becoming like um kind of uh a, a dominant force right. in the in the in the business that he was kind of creating this other guy also created uh, a patent but he wasn't necessarily as business minded as edison mm -hmm. so to avoid a, a legal battle they kind of joined forces and created their own company together at a swan to distribute the electrical um infrastructure and uh light bulb technology in britain mm. so a lot of innovation happening there all like us and all this is happening in 10 years this is in 89 so it's like a lot of a lot of things are really happening mm -hmm. uh, progressing really fast from 80 to 1900s mm -hmm. and then after that even like more and more and more mm -hmm. the light bulb allows people to work at night yeah, exactly so it's like they can essentially get double the work done mm -hmm. you know so no it's innovative everyone needs it everyone has it nowadays you know yeah uh let's see what else i have i'm a little bit all over the place with my notes no no worries i could also imagine that like there were a lot more fire hazards back in the day when everything was just candlelit you know yeah well um, yeah i imagine there was like electrical fires early on too you oh know? no definitely like before the technology was kind of perfected there's still electrical fires today so, oh yeah you know no, i'm just saying like back in the day it was a lot easier to like if you had a party you know you would have a lot of your house lit with candles it would be easy if you didn't have servants or other people there to to be like hey you missed this candle you know hmm. or for example 
uh, you're having a party and someone knocks over a candle and not a lot of people notice, boom, there's a fire. Right. And that's going to spread really quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeesh. No, but I could also imagine the electrical fires at first were not <laughs> uh, forgiving. Yeah. Um, but he, Edison, like I was kind of mentioning throughout, also patented, patented a system. Patented. Patented a system for distributing electricity as a utility to compete with gas, com gas companies. And he founded the Edison Illuminating Company. The company established the first investor-owned electric utility in 1882 on Pearl Street Station in New York City. Mm. On September 4th, 1882. Uh, can you Ed put the mic a little more, dear man? Yeah. Yeah. On September 4th, 1882, Edison switched on his Pearl Street generating station's electrical power distributing system, mm -hmm. which provided 110 volts direct current DC to... 100 sorry sorry to 59 customers in lower manhattan hmm. so uh, edison apparently has the dc and then i believe that um what's his name uh what's his name Va the tesla nikola oh, tesla nikola tesla he has the um he has the alternating current ac ac dc that's what that means oh oh a couple goals <laughs> They have yeah. AC, he has DC. And then in January 1882, he switched on his first steam generating power station at Holborn Viaduct in London. Mm -hmm. The DC supply system provided electricity supplies to street lamps and several private dwellings within a short distance of the station. Mm. January 19th, 1883, the first standardized incandescent electric lighting system employing overhead wires began in Ross rosell new jersey hmm. so like like i was saying kind of in 10 years the first public building with um lights was in 1882 and in in 10 years things really kind of started going crazy and um just accelerating really quickly once the light bulb you know turns on mm -hmm. people get work done at night light bulb starts getting popularity and right. uh becoming cheaper and available starts you know lighting up everywhere so yeah things uh things happen really quickly at that at that time i'm also thinking like who were the first people that made decorative lamps Hmm. because there's a huge market for that nowadays like imagine i could just like think people that were making dresses or or just kind of uh you know, working on designs, clothes or whatever could have been like, oh, we can make lampshades. Yeah. Make it a little more, uh, make a room pop a little more. Just make it more decorative. Make it more decorative. Like in um, Bread Dead, you kind of see in the saloons, like all the decorative lamps, you know, people's houses. Right. And and, that, and that's, Red Dead, like, I, like we were saying, is uh, 1899. Mm -hmm. So that's within 20 years yeah. of the light bulb even being kind of revolutionized so Man. it had to have been like it's all it's all happening quickly like within someone's lifetime mm -hmm. lights are turning on like Shoot. things are really kind of changing a lot imagine Ca sorry imagine just getting a lamp for your house growing up like being a kid using candles your whole life and then all of a sudden boom a light right or if you're like even like if you're born in this time like in 1880 or mm -hmm. you know 1870s like you're growing up without lights, mm -hmm. you know, one of these days it becomes cheap and available for you to have lights. Boom. You have a light bulb in your house. Um, then in, by the time you're 30, you know, um, you start seeing the, the first car, the, I have the info here about the first car a little bit, Ooh. uh, 1886. So those are becoming cheaper and more accessible by, you know, the, the early, um, 1900s. So by the time you're like 50, you're seeing cars. So it's like this, this time must have been a crazy mm -hmm. time, like turn of the century, turn of the millennium of the 1800s. And it just getting, kept getting faster after that. Yeah. And then like, dang, even, even like, um, the 19, 1900s to 2000s. Mm -hmm. We had the internet at that time, which was even 
like another crazy revolutionary technology. So like things are since mm-hmm. since 1880 have been crazy. Um, it, excuse me, crazy advancing. Mm-hmm. That's insane. Yeah. Wow. Excuse me. All right. Is that all? Well, kind of. So, um, I pretty much got through most of the info I have. Mm-hmm. I had one more. I had two more questions. Okay. One I already answered. Shoot. Um, so I'll just throw it out there just in case you're, you uh, maybe forgot. But uh, when was the light bulb patented? What year? We have 1850, 1880, and 1913. 1880. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, good good knowledge check there. The thank you. Thank you. Light bulb was patented in 1880. Um pretty cool um memory there babe thank you thank you i'm usually not that good <laughs> he is patented his his historic patent embodying the principles of his incandescent lamp paved the way for the universal domestic use of electric light hmm. um and then i have here we already touched on a lot but red dead 2 is 1889 for context mm-hmm. so Man, that game is great. There wasn't even really lamps in that game, um, as far as I remember. I think they were still using a lot of candlelight in that game. So they were. Yeah. So um, he actually, Edison is actually credited with three incredible inventions that have impacted the world. And I'm almost done because this is kind of the last of the information that I have, and uh, I didn't get too much into. Uh, you know the rest of his life and i intend to get more into the his uh feud and his rivalry with tesla because i think that's very interesting i'll i'll do tesla on no. a future episode they had a falling out they they were like enemies if, if you remember um tesla a character who was supposed to represent tesla was in uh, red dead 2 I think so, yeah. Yeah, so I'm not going to spoil anything there, but okay. there's a little bit of, you know, feelings that that character mm-hmm. uh, expresses. So, right. yeah, so. Oh, you're right. Right. So, there, I didn't, I, I don't really know the whole history, so I can't really even say too much, but I plan to get into that in the future, so look out for that. But the one last question here is, what is an invention that Edison had no part in creating? The uh, so one of the options is the automobile. We have the microphone and then the video camera. Automobile. Correct. The first auto was created by Carl Benz in <laughs> no 1886. Way. Yes, Mercedes Benz. It was the first car ever. Yep. It, well, wow. it was not Mercedes, but Benz. Be- right. One of the two. Benz. Ah, <clears throat> uh, so, and then so technically multiple people are credited with the invention of the microphone, but. One of the things that Edison is kind of known for is advancing on existing technology, and he created kind of a better microphone Hmm. that people used moving forward. And he also created the technology for recording sound, so he is pretty innovative there. And he also created certain elements that went into the advancement of video recording, although... You know, certain video camera um, things, like, or video camera, like, he didn't necessarily invent the video camera, but Mm -hmm. he was responsible for advancing that technology a lot. Like cameras, like pictures. Cameras existed, but he kind of made it a lot more... Pizzazzy. Yeah, (laughs) he, yeah, he made videos kind of possible, in a way. They used to have, like, um... Shout out. Shout out, yeah. No, the um, the ones where like you would like crank it, like you would be kind of taking a video back in the day. Yeah, is that the one that you're talking mm-hmm. about? The one that they cranked? yeah, I'm pretty sure like it was just that kind of technology. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't even know what the first one was. There's a lot about this guy that I could have gone into, but mostly just kind of took more of a deep dive onto his personal life and growing up. Oh, I feel like that's a really great way to kind of start it because I mean, like you hear all about what these great people do, but you don't really hear a lot about their life like i never knew he got fired for most of his jobs yeah so like he was <laughs> Makes one of feel a little better <laughs> exactly he was one of the most like influential inventors and creators could keep genius a job. people yeah couldn't even couldn't even keep a job because he was in the basement 
because he was he was pursuing his passion mm -hmm. lived in the basement you know so yeah exactly but yeah i have here that the telephone existed but he improved on the technology he, he there's actually an interesting thing that happened between him and another person emil Ber berliner berliner Lu he, they created a microphone kind of at the same time hmm. but i think that what's his name edison patented it first and this other guy edward hughes david edward hughes studied and published a paper on the physics of loose contact carbon transmitters but he did not patent his work so three people kind of at the same time were creating microphone technology but it was Edison that really kind of gets the most credit in history. Because he least. did it first, or he patented it first. Right. Well, That's he kind of messed up. Well, he patented it first, and he also kind of created the technology for recording sound mm -hmm. uh, and the phonograph, which is kind of similar technology to the microphone that people use in telephones. So it's kind of, it kind of goes hand in hand, so it's easy to conflate the two. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense. But yeah, that's kind of about it in terms of uh, what I have for Edison. I have a little bit more info. I'm just kind of reading it over right now. Thank you for uh, for sharing. This is really interesting, honestly. Yeah, I honestly, like, I was looking into history of electricity mm -hmm. i was getting a little bit bored but i i learned about edison and and it was kind of crazy yeah, how much on. he revolutionized things and how mm -hmm. many contributions he has to science so i kind of took that and ran with it <laughs> and yeah i actually learned a lot and i found it really interesting myself so it's cool that i was able to do a little bit of learning and explaining to the audience here and to me and to you yeah, <laughs> yeah. thank you so uh thank you all for uh watching appreciate you guys again uh if you guys are interested or would like to give us any a bit of your information uh, we have ways that you can contact us below please uh hit us up on our patreon patreon we have a dot com slash half history dot com slash half history email us at half is uh, gmail dot com slash half history pod you can hit us up at half history um on social media at half history pod mm -hmm. on uh twitter um you know the more that people are active with us the more active we're going to be with our stuff we haven't really um been too active with it in when it comes to making things look pretty and making you know things actually updated but we are looking to have that be an option in the future if you reach out with us mm -hmm. we'll um we'll respond so mm -hmm. yeah just hit, hit us, us up. up yeah don't be strangers because mm -hmm. we'll always be here every friday with half history mm -hmm. uh, Love you guys. thank you so much for joining us thank and you for joining um us. yeah we hope to see you next week hope to see you next week bye bye